I'd like you to imagine a world where humanity has been wiped off the face of the earth. What do you think our advanced technology would look like to new civilizations thousands of years later? How would they be interpreted by our successors? Would they see us as gods or something else? Reconciling gorgeous, realistic scenery with enigmatic sci-fi, the Horizon series tells the story of humanity humbled by the raw power of nature and science, where everything, the people, the machines, and even nature itself are all deeply intertwined and connected together to create a living, breathing world brimming with history, culture, mystery, and intrigue. This is episode two of a brand new YouTube series that explores the art, technology, and visual design behind the world's most incredible games. Welcome to World Builders. Following the massive success of the Killzone franchise, Guerrilla Games set out to create a brand new standalone series. The beautiful, lush world of Horizon Zero Dawn first saw its conception in 2010, a year before the release of Killzone 3, before finally releasing in February of 2017. The original concept already had many of the ingredients that already define Horizon Zero Dawn in its final state. Robot dinosaurs, a post-post-apocalyptic world reclaimed by the beauty of nature, and even our main protagonist, Aloy. Now, the main goal of the game was to create a world built on a mystery that invites exploration. Many areas have a majestic natural feel to them, complemented by a layer of mystery that slowly unfolds for the player to piece together what actually happened. Guerrilla Games actually admitted it was quite an ambitious project to create a hyper-real world of such size, especially since the team had to reconcile both high-tech creatures and low-tech tribal communities in a fresh but believable schizotectro. The seamlessly open world paints a gorgeous picture of the dichotomy between the dangers of a post-apocalyptic world and the beauty of nature, with a special focus on the question of what if humanity wasn't the dominant species anymore? Set several centuries into our own future, Horizon Zero Dawn tells the tale of a young woman named Aloy, who lives in a tribal land littered with the ruins of 21st century architecture and mysterious high-tech machinery. The landscape is filled with giant robotic animals that roam the wild, designed to resemble everything from horses and giraffes to hawks and alligators. To create these original sci-fi creatures, the team consulted a robotic specialist to assist with the designs. Each model was built with a realistic skeletal system and was inspired by real animals that we're all familiar with. Yet, some of their features were intentionally exaggerated to convey their functionality. For example, the Watcher was designed with a giant central eye because the machine is built for surveillance. Makes sense. Additionally, anthropology professors were consulted to authenticate the world's decay over a millennium, as well as the structures of each faction. The architecture of all the tribes have unique and realistic formations, with their designs signaling their organizational systems, traditions, level of development, and even practices of living. For example, Aloy's tribe, Nora, is a sophisticated matriarchal culture that revolves around spirituality. Their settlements were made to showcase the natural beauty of their locations. They use raw materials to create their houses without overpowering the landscape. As a matriarchal society that worships the All-Mother, their items and clothing are all adorned with symbols of the female anatomy. The Nora tribe originates in the mountains and cliffs of the wilds, so their isolation has left them as one of the least technologically advanced tribes, which is very, very evident in their character design, which uses a lot of natural colors, furs, and textures overlaid with crude MacGyvered armor from scavenged machines that they've hunted with bows and spears. At the other end of the spectrum, the Karja was an advanced, highly civilized culture. Their capital meridian rose on both sides of the Colorado River, now covered in rich vegetation. The architecture is imposing, commanding respect. As you enter the city, you can feel their prosperity. Their costumes are sophisticated, featuring shades of deep red and gold, along with symbols of the sun, which their culture worshipped. So those are the basics of the design principles of Horizon. But let's talk about some technical stuff for a second. The proprietary Decima engine used for the Killzone series was altered to create Horizon Zero Dawn. Where Killzone was designed more as a dystopian nightmare, Horizon Zero Dawn was infused with a sense of wonder, 
hope, and adventure. Guerrilla Games also added a dynamic skylight to the mix, which lights everything based on the sky color from all angles. The indirect lighting of the sun was baked up four separate times in the day and night cycle to four different sets of Iridan's volume textures. These were then blended over time to give the illusion of accurate indirect lighting throughout the day. Pretty cool. This less destructive pipeline allowed them to spend less time fixing content and more time working on the lighting itself, which results in the beautiful painterly effects that hint at the golden hour in every second of this game. I think it's through this juxtaposition between hyper-realistic environments and stylized lighting that the team achieved a really unique art style, reminiscing of the high contrast paintings of Albert Burstadt or the work of British Romantic painter John Constable. As for modeling of the assets, much of the landscapes and vegetation were created through a procedural workflow. The team made use of a system for storing data for input into the different procedural systems, internally dubbed world data maps. Through this, each shader, placement system, and sound could query the particular parameters of a specific location, such as humidity, temperature, distance to the nearest river, etc, etc. Really interesting technology. One that heralds both destruction and opportunity. Released in early 2022, Horizon Forbidden West was built atop of Zero Dawn's unique art style. The romantic qualities of the landscapes were preserved, yet enhanced with the usage of advanced technologies and proprietary tools. While Zero Dawn was a hyper-real game in its right, I really think it takes a step back in humble reverence before the high level of detail depicted by the latest installment of the game series. It was definitely a challenge for Guerrilla Games to create a sequel to a game that already pushed the limits of what's possible in terms of graphics. Thus, I think the studio made a very good call by playing it safe by expanding and improving on what we already loved about Zero Dawn. The staff worked on certain elements that were only really touched upon in the first game, such as the tribes of Tanakith and Utaru, for which they designed new settlements, characters, and NPCs, as well as cultural items and weapons. From the town of Plainsong, erected in a series of massive satellite dishes of the old world, to Fall's Edge, the rickety outcrop perched atop an enormous waterfall in the middle of a lush jungle. Then there's the far west itself, the ruins of San Francisco and Las Vegas, all wondrous and cruelly realistic interpretations of what a post-post-apocalyptic world would look like. In Horizon Forbidden West, the delicate waltz between organic beauty and metallic sci-fi brutality received an even brighter spotlight, as the team at Guerrilla Games brought forward several new beasts. Creatures like the Tremor Tusk and Shell Snapper enriched the collection of mechanical nightmares for a more robust game experience. Using the extra power of the PlayStation 5, along with their remarkable volumetric cloud rendering system, Gorilla delivered an outstanding level of realistic accuracy for this game's skies. This system, internally known as Nubis, uses a series of clever programming tricks to calculate and render realistic cloud systems in under 2 milliseconds. This tool allowed procedural weather and lighting simulation that compiled with each scene's geography, level of humidity and atmospheric pressure, temperature, and even wind a dramatic change from Horizon Zero Dawn's static clouds. The Decima engine was further improved to account for the higher level of foliage density, along with the greater texture detail and mesh density. Compared to the very first Horizon game, where shadow maps tended to be of a rather lower resolution, unless they were close to the player camera, Forbidden West features a much higher asset detail level, pushed further out into the distance. Additionally, you may have noticed the updated version of the engine supports some really cool water effects. Wave crests on the ocean actually break, even when the effects occur off in the distance. The water rendering system is truly impressive, down to the frothy bubbles in the waterfall or the way the water level raises ever so slightly when a character steps into it. If you want to learn more about this, feel free to check out my video I just released on how water works in video games. Yet, what makes the new Decima engine so impressive is its next-gen character models. Pictures of the main character's level of realism took the internet by storm. Close-up shots of Aloy's freckles, 
pores, and various skin imperfections, along with the much debated facial hair, which I thought was ridiculous. The debate, not the facial hair. The peach fuzz on a backlit character is such a unique and small detail to add as studios rarely have the budget for this type of insignificant yet hard to achieve detail. I thought it was really impressive. While characters had to sustain some compromises due to the performance constraints in the first game with Forbidden West, none of that really is there anymore. Even the random NPCs are presented in a level of realism that turns Forbidden West into a highly immersive piece of art. So yeah, Horizon's pretty cool.